And Father God, we just thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for Father's Day. Father God, it is a day that we get to share with our wives. Hey, we want to do something for ourselves. <laughs> so thank you. Father, we just thank you for your grace. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is already present. And um, just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Sometimes you just got to just say thank you, you know. You don't have to do a long prayer. Just say thank you, Lord. Just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just thank you for being alive. You know, we talk about being a real church, real people, filled with real people, living real lives. So let's find out what that means. I'm sure you know what that means. But our desire here at the river, and as pastors uh, here at the river, we desire to make the Bible come alive, come alive to you. You know, it's um, through tangible experiences that we share, that we've been through. And as you can tell, you know, we are real people and we are living real lives and we have real problems, real concerns. And this is a real community that we can come together and fellowship with real people that are struggling in certain areas that we've struggled before, you know, where they encourage each other. But that's when we talk about that, you know, the transformation and change comes when we're real with and authentic with each other. Amen. Yeah. It's not always going to look pretty up here. It's not always going to be full of eloquence. But one thing you can count on is that it will be real. It will be authentic and it will be transparent. Amen. Yeah. And as parents, through Christ Jesus, we don't always get it right. God uses flawed and broken people. And he's using us as flawed and broken people to get his word out. So you don't always have to be perfect. You don't, have your, you don't have to have life together. It doesn't always have to be peachy keen because God can use you right where you are. And we're, we're striving to be perfect or per, we're striving to be perfected through Jesus Christ. We're not perfect, but we're striving to be perfect in his eyes. Amen? Amen. Amen and amen. And through that, parents will get it right, mothers will get it right, and fathers will get it right. Which brings me to the message today. We're not only here to honor and celebrate our Heavenly Father, we are also to honor our earthly fathers. So with the fathers that are here and fathers that you know, call them, reach out to them, and say Happy Father's Day. You know, fathers don't always have it together. We may act like we do, but really we don't. Amen. Amen. Can I get another amen? Amen. Amen. I found this poem. It says, fathers are like cement in a brick wall. Nobody pays much attention to them, but they keep the bricks from falling and they keep the bricks together. So all that cement you see in them bricks, those are fathers. Turn with me, if you would, to Ephesians 6, 1 through 9. This is going to be the text, main text for our message this morning. We've all heard these scriptures today, before in Ephesians 6, 1, 9. But um, listen with keen ears today, a little different ears. Allow the Holy Spirit to direct you and listen to the essence of the message. So let me set the picture of this message today. Paul starts off by explaining and establishing the family structure within the church and community in, in the previous verses, in particular Ephesians 5, verses 21 to 33. So if you have an opportunity, read them. But I'm going to paraphrase those scriptures for the sake of time. Paul knew that the family and the church structure needed to be a good witness to society. Why? Because the order of the family impacts the order of the community. The community is the church, the city, and the world. And we can't have, an order, we can't have order in the community, the church, the city, the world, if we don't have order in the family. So Paul says, and I'm paraphrasing here, look at, he says, look, first of all, everyone be subject to one another. In other words, be respectful, honoring to one another. Respect authority. Respect the law. Respect each other. All out of the reverence of loving Jesus Christ. So because I love Jesus Christ, I love you. Not because I love myself, I love you, but because I love you through Jesus Christ. I have new eyes when I'm in Jesus. It's like that saying, you know, a friend of mine is a friend of yours. Well, any friend of mine is a friend of yours. Well, because I love Jesus Christ, I love you. Amen. Now, when I say this next word, don't go running out the church talking about pastor told me to do this. But the word is submit. 
Okay, this message has nothing to do with submit. Not submit to your husband, submit to your, your wife. It doesn't have anything to do with that. That is not the message for today. Listen to the essence of what I'm saying. So submit. So Paul goes on and says, wife, submit to your husbands. Be subject to your husbands. Like Christ, the, excuse me, like, like Christ is the head of the church to love them like Christ loves the church. I'm sorry, I skipped something here. Excuse me. Reverence to, your own, reverence to your husband, meaning respect him, hold him in high esteem, honor his decisions because you love the Lord. Remember, because I love Jesus, I love you and I respect you as my, my husband. That's how we, to, we are to submit. Paul goes on and says to the husbands, we are the head of the wife, just like Christ is the head of the church, to love them like Christ loved the church, seeking the highest good for her, our wife, surrounding our wives with caring and unselfish love, loving our wives like we love ourselves our own body. Because I love Jesus Christ, I love and respect you as my wife. You see the theme here? Mutual love and respect. Be faithful and devoted to her, eventually leaving your parents' home and becoming one flesh. Leaving your parents' home and becoming one flesh. In order to have structure in the house, we have to have our relationship right with God before we can have our relationship right with each other in the home. You see, if we mutually love and respect each other, simply mutually love and respect each other, then guess what? We will love and respect each other. Women want what? Love and, and men want respect? That's the reason there's so many divorces, so many trials and errors in marriages, because we're not simply loving and respecting each other. Some of us know how, some of us doesn't. Don't. Paul then proceeds to explain the duties of children, uh-oh, and the, and the relationship with their parents. And that's where we pick up in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. If we loved and respected each other, there wouldn't be half the problems in our marriages that we have today. Children, it is your Christian duty to obey your parents, for this is the right thing to do. Respect, honor your father and mother. It is the first commandment that, that's with a promise added to it. So, all that may, so, all, so that all may go well with you and you may live long time on this land, in the land or on this earth. Children, it's your Christian duty to obey your parents, for this is the right thing to do. Nothing there gives an age limit of children, right? So if we can conclude that we all are children, children to parents and children of God. Amen? No matter young or wise. I'm not going to say old because I look at older people now and I have a newfound respect because they have a lot of wisdom. So the young and the wise, hence the older folks in our church or older folks in life. Amen. And I don't know where that age, where the age difference where you become old, but hey, if you're older than me, I would assume you have a little more wisdom than me. So it, not, it, may, not, it may be challenging for some because you know how parents are. You know, like Will Smith says, parents just don't understand. Because parents sometimes just don't understand. They really don't. I don't understand half the things my children be doing, man. Come on. Parents just don't understand. However, there's a reason for us to listen and respect our parents just like there's a reason for us to listen and respect God. And that is to obtain wisdom. Proverbs 13.1 says, A wise son or daughter desires a father's discipline, but the know-it-all never listens to correction. And we know a lot of know-it-alls. I used to... I'm not going to go there. No, no, I'm not going to go there, but you know... My name is Andre Know-It-All Gray. <laughs> you know sometimes we get into a position where we know it all and we still don't know it, nothing. Can I get a witness? Amen. God's design for children is to learn to honor and respect their parents, whether they live with them or not. So when they grow up and leave the house, they will be respectful and love others from what, they're tra from what their parents are training them to be in their home. Amen? But as they learn respect at home, we must trust that they will respect others when they leave the home. We have to trust that when Brandon leaves, which he did leave, we didn't kick him out. He wanted to go. He left. Pastor Timmy is very happy with that because, you know, a couple weeks ago she was like, Look, I can't wait till he leaves. Now she has the whole room to herself. 
workout room, craft room, exercise, whatever she wants to do, she can do now. So you might say, what is there to learn? Sometimes I, I wonder, what is there to learn actually from us as parents? Well, parents may not know everything, but they know more stuff than their children know. Think about it. And it's our responsibility as parents to lead and guide them in that, and be that example and, and live them in, uh, guide them in that direction. So if you are a parent, wisdom sets in when you have children. Experiences set in when you have children. And that's what it is. So we know something. But sometimes the kids, and I was a kid one day, we just, just again, parents just don't understand because we don't relate. Relate. Sometimes it's not off, we're not, it's like my mother used to tell me, she said, I'm your father, your mother, your friend, and your disciplinary. I discipline you also. And sometimes you have to discern when to be that because if you try to be all that at one, it gets a little confusing because next thing you know, they start flipping off their mom. You have to remind them, I'm not your friend right now. <laughs> so there's a little balance there for single parents and sometimes even married couples. But we have to live by example. Teach them to say thank you and no thank you. Kids today, children today, adults today, everybody in general, just for some reason doesn't say thank you. I mean, like, thank you is, is, you know, I work with customers that just don't say thank you. Sometimes I'm like, is there anything else you need? <laughs> Something? <laughs> and they just don't know how to th say thank you. So teach our children to say thank you. Fathers, say thank you to your children. Say thank you to their mother. You know, bless Pastor Timothy's heart when I'm running late, because I usually run late nowadays. You know what? Thank you. I noticed that you were busy this morning, but thank you for making my lunch, babe. Let your children hear that, you, that, you thank your, that you're thanking their mothers. You would be surprised how impactful that is because that's teaching them what respect and honor the parents, wives, and husband, respecting mutual respect with each other. It's like when you open up a door with people and open up doors and, and car doors for people, it's like they don't, you know, where, where's the chivalry at anymore, you know? People say, oh, you don't have to do that. My husband doesn't do that. My wife doesn't, you know, my, my son doesn't do that. Well, those things have to be brought back. I opened up the, a lady, uh, a door for a lady the other day. She's like, oh, I can do it myself. I was like, why does that always have to be an issue? I'm definitely, in, you know, independent women, go. But at least, I mean, this is just out of respect. I'm not trying to hit on you. I just want to open the door and be kind because you deserve it. And they have to be, you know, have to make it a, a big argument about it. I just want to be nice. That's all. So women, when a man opens the door, allow him to open the door for you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We've taken all, so many things all out of perspective. So anyway, you know, I used to, um, our founding pastors, Ed and Laura, used to always say thank you to each other and always say thank you to the kids. So much so, it just made me itch sometimes. Like, stop with all the niceties. <laughs> but when you're around them so much, and some of us have been around them so much, it starts to rub off on you. You just start thanking people just to say thank you before they even do something. That's how much they said thank you. But praise God, each and every count over from the younger, from the youngest one to the oldest, oldest are so respectful to the elders. I see you, Sarah. But seriously, they are. So it tends to rub off on you when you're around people that say thank you a lot, you know? And sometimes just reach out and just say thank you. I tell my customers, thank you. Another example, teach our children how to eat healthy, how to make proper decisions, how to make proper decisions when you have all the money to eat what you want to eat, when you want to eat it, to, have, to making proper decisions when you don't have all the money you need to eat what you want to eat. Spend wisely, my son, my daughter. Amen. So we have to teach them that. Teach them, lead them by example in life. There are going to be challenges and difficulties and challenges. You know what? But for me and my house, we serve the Lord. And for the grace, this is how we do it. Whatever your last family name is, be that as it may, whatever it's the Gray Conovers, uh, the Smiths, the Blacks, the Whites, it don't matter. We seek the Lord here when we have challenges. We seek the Lord here and we serve the Lord when we have difficulties and struggles. It's okay to have them. Sometimes I say it's okay to kind of keep a, 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 high, a, a loud discussion in front of your kids because they know Hey, we don't always get it right, but this is how we do it. We lower our voice, we respect each other, we honor each other, or we take it into another room. 
But don't be surprised if I may fly off the top. I'm not perfect. Amen? So teach them real life. So what do we know as parents? I guess nothing, but the Bible says that children are not disciplined. If they're not disciplined properly or fail to res respect each other, listen and obey their parents, mothers and fathers are much worse off in life. Look how half the adults that run the country, look how they're acting. They probably needed a good spanking. Now, if your parents are telling you to do something contrary to a word and you're old enough to discern, then discern. But all in all, we're still supposed to obey and respect our parents. You know what? You know, that's my mom, that's my dad. But you know what? I may not like what they say, I may not like what they do, but I respect and honor them because Jesus said so. Parents, God is not looking for religious parents. He's looking for righteous parents. Parents that would don't just talk to talk, but walk and walk. We have to learn how to walk these things in life out. No, we are not perfect. Fathers are not perfect. Parents are not perfect. But this is how we do what we do. We follow the Lord, the Lord and we serve the Lord. Amen? One of the greatest commandments in the Bible is Deuteronomy 6. 6.5. It says, and let's read it as if it's talking to us as a community. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength. So that we, going up to six, Deuteronomy 6.2, that you may reverently fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, and keep all his statutes, his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged or you should enjoy long life. Deuteronomy 6 through 7, we, we must commit ourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again and again to your children. Talk to them about it when they get up and at home, when they go to bed and when they get up. So repeat them again and again. Sometimes we need to be reminded of the word again and again and again. And it's okay, just like when you go to work. You have continuing education. You need to be reminded of the ethics. Every six months, we're reminded as employees of a financial institution, the code of, that, code of ethics. We're reminded. So we need to be reminded of the word. So get into the word and remind yourself again and again and again. And I tell you, when parents have said and done all they can do with their kids, and they used all the words in the dictionary, the only words left is what? God's word. When you've tried all that you can try, you've done all that you can do in your power, and it runs out, nothing's changing, nothing's working, try God's word. Amen? Yeah. Proverbs 22.6 says, Dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go, and the values they learn from you will be with them for life. The Amplified Version says, Train up a child in the way they should go, and when he or she is older, or he is older, will, they will not depart from it. So to train indicates to give instruction or to live by example. Our Christian duty as parents is to teach them and show them the manner that they are intended for. Not what they're intended for this way, but his way. What God is intending for them. Amen? It's not going to be easy. It's not always going to be right. But our children, but in order for our children, in order for our, teach, for our children to become children of the word, we have to become parents of the word. And one of the ways to do this is in Ephesians 6, 4. It says, parents, now this is interesting, parents, and particularly fathers, and I'll explain that in a moment, do not treat or provoke your children in such a way as to make them angry. Do not exacerbate, Amplified Version says, do not exacerbate them to resentment. Instead, raise them with Christian discipline and instructions. Well, fathers, you know how we do. When things don't go our way, we catch a fit sometimes. And you know how we are as fathers. We want things to go our way when it comes to disciplining our children. My way, my way, or the highway. And you know that doesn't always work. That is not always successful because the first, ear, first word you hear is, honey, did you really have to say that to them? And you look at yourself in the mirror and go, no, I really didn't. But you don't tell her that. You're like, yeah, I had to do it. This is the way it should be due. One, two, three, four, five. And she's going, oh, that's not the way you do things. So bless Pastor Timberley's heart. I, mean, I won't get into that right now. <laughs> but there should be some type of balance. 
We should all be on the same page, especially if we're believers. When it comes to our children, we should be on the same page in raising them. It may be a little different, but the end result is the same. Amen? As fathers, when it comes to our training, instructing, the Bible tells us we can't provoke our children. And for the longest time, I've struggled with this. Because again, I'm, I was raised that it was my way or the highway. But Pastor Timley said, you know, you may need to try something different. Your approach needs to be a little different than that. You know, maybe consider doing, if you want, if you want things to change, you may want to consider doing something different. The approach has to be different. The approach has to be loving and with grace. And I'm thinking, I am. I'm being loving. I'm reprimanding them. But that doesn't work. That doesn't work. And you know for the, the teenagers here or the young adults, that doesn't work all the time. Our way is not always the best way. And our way doesn't transform their life. Our way kicks them out, leaves them. You know, when I was a teenager, my uh, stepfather came into my life when I was 13. And praise God, he tried to do the best he can, but, or best he could. But thing, the but thing is, he tried his way. I was 13, so I had already experienced my father, and here comes another father trying to tell me what to do. And I'm like the young man of the house, 13 or 15 years old. So he would tell me, look, you're going to call me dad, and it's going to be this way. And of course, I'd say yes, but deep down in my heart, I wasn't going to do it. So because he didn't have a father to show and teach him the way is the reason our relationship didn't go well. And this is before I was a believer. But in retrospect, I kind of feel bad for him because he didn't know what I know today as, 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 as fathers raising their children in the, in the way that should go. And I pray that he's changed. Well, one of them has passed, but one of them is still alive. But I pray that he's able to feel like a father because he didn't have any children in his life. So just realize that fathers or stepfathers have it hard too. You know, when I came in, in Brandon's life, I made it very clear that I would never interfere with his relationship with his mother. Because I've seen other relationships go awry when the fathers try to come in, i.e. my relationship with my mother. So stepfathers, kudos to the stepfathers. So basically she said, your approach needs to be different. And I flew off the lid. I got angry. I hollered because I said, this shouldn't be the case. They should give me grace. But the thing is, I wasn't extending grace to them. Slowly, 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 I started to change and do things different. Now, I'm still a work in progress, but I started to, my teaching, my training, my discipline started to change a little because I tried something different. I tried to do it in love. I'm trying to do it in love and with grace and understanding and kindness and forgiveness, you know? But hey, I'm not perfect. But in order for me to get a different result, I had to do something differently. So, in order for our children to be open to training, instructing, and discipline from us, it's not the way to provoke them. Meaning we can't irritate them, exacerbate them, rub them the wrong way, or expect them to do things our way. If we train and instruct and discipline our children the wrong spirit, with wrong methods, or when we're angry, they are not going to listen to us. And if we're placing all kinds of restrictions and cruel demands on them, it's only going to have an adverse effect on them causing them to stay away and stay angry at the Father. Fathers, we have to seek to make obedience desirable and obtainable for our children by showing them love and grace. You know, how many of us want to be disciplined with love and grace? I would have loved to have been. You know, I, my, father, my father used to whoop me, and he used to whoop me in love. One day I took a dollar and keyed up this kid's car. Don't tell nobody. He whooped me, and he said he loved me. So I told you not to do this because I love you. He pronounced every syllable, every syllable. My behind felt it, and it changed my life because I apologized. I gave the dollar back, and I never did it again. So I turned out to be okay. I'm not saying discipline your children that way, but with the old school, that way I was raised, it worked on me. Amen? Sometimes you need to... Phew, Sometimes, what, what? Where's that belt? Or a switch? My grandmother used to make me go get a switch off the tree in the neighborhood. Hey, that's just the way it was. But I loved her, and I respected her, and I honored her. 
Amen. So let's continue. The Bible does say in Proverbs twenty two fifteen, children just naturally do silly and careless things. But a good spanking will teach them how to behave. <laughs> a good spanking. Not an angry spanking. Not a hurtful, intent spanking, but a loving, disciplined spanking. My stepfather used to say, this is the reason I'm going to spank you. You understand the reason I'm going to spank you? He would have a 20, 30 minute conversation before I got spanked. And he, then he would ask me, do you want one? And he used to swat me with the holes in the, in the, uh, in the uh, paddle. He used to say, do you want one, two, or three? So I'm thinking three is too long and one is going to be too hard. So I said two. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> so I'm not saying, and, and I know we're, the society and the world we live in, spanking is a, a faux pas because kids are spanking their parents. Okay? But use some discernment in that area when you talk to other people because people get sensitive in that area. But I'm telling you, for most of us from the old school, knew a good spanking worked. <laughs> Let me read something to you. It says, some people believe in discipline, but not physical discipline such as spanking. However, the Bible is the final word on what is truth. And it is not mere opinion or theory. The word rod in the Bible indicates a thin stick or switch that can be used to give a small amount of physical pain with no lasting physical injury. A child should never be bruised, injured, or cut. Ooh, bruised, okay. <laughs> never got cut or injured, but bruised definitely. But a child should never be bruised, injured, or cut by a physical correction. The Bible warns that parents should never abuse the power over their authority they have over their children while they are young because it provokes the children to righteous anger. Hence Ephesians 6, 4. Physical discipline is always done in love, never as a vent to the parent, par from the parent's frustration. It is also just one part of discipline and should be used when the child shows defiance to clear instructions, not in the heat of the moment. Spread that gospel. Change somebody's life. So we're talking about father speak, seeking. First and foremost, as fathers, we should be seeking Jesus and some direction. But at the same time, be open to, to seeking fathers in the community of believers because that's what fathers in the community of believers are there for. So what did I do? Again, Pastor Timley, in her wisdom, says, you know what? In order to do something different, why don't you call someone different? So I called my friend, my brother, my pastor, Jamie. Was it stepping out of my comfort zone? Yes. But I said, you know what? The only way my relationship is going to enhance with my children, i.e. Trinity, is I needed to do something different. So I called Pastor Jamie because he's not only a man of God, he's my pastor and friend, as I mentioned, and he has a teenage daughter. So I told him what was going on. We're experiencing some things in our bump, and the relationship's kind of bumpy. He listened. There was no judgment, no condemnation. He joked and he prayed. And praise God for my wife, Pastor Timberley, and his leading because now it's helped me discipline and train them in a different light, in a different perspective. And our relationship is growing. And if you didn't know my daughter, her daughter my daughter's name is Trinity. So, and I would say as a body, as a community, pray for us because I want a relationship with her that is everlasting, that is trustful, that is fun, where she can come to me when she has something on her heart to share definitely respecting their relationship with their mother but I want to be included because I come home sometimes from a late day and I feel that I'm excluded I'm not excluded it's just I didn't include myself in there I came home thinking things are supposed to you know just update me give me the you know a to z right now and that's not they're already worn out and I'm worn out when I come home expecting them to even give me more it didn't work and I said, Lord, this is not the type of relationship because I noticed they keep going to their mother, but they're not coming to me. And that's some real talk. I felt left out. I felt hurt. I felt not in, in, in included with these things. And I realized that, again, my approach had to be different. I had to, be, I had to listen when I didn't want to necessarily listen. I had to not speak when I, did, when I wanted to speak. And I had to pray. Because in order for me to affect my daughter in the right way, I had to do the right thing. Amen? And that's, and that's me sharing with you as a transparent friend, brother in Christ, and your pastor. Because I don't always get it right with my daughter. But I'm striving. So I expect you all to pray for us that our relationship would change and grow. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. So moving forward. Enough of the transparency. <laughs> I'm just joking. Remember, if you want relationship, you got to be in relationship. 
If you want somebody to listen, you have to listen. Amen? So, um, I'm nearing the end here. So I asked for prayer. Yes, yes, yes. You know, Timberly was in a doctor's office one day, and she had a conversation with a wiser gentleman. And he said to this, he said to her, what he's learned throughout his life as kids get older, become teenagers and young adults, he said to listen to them. Give them advice when they ask. Because at that time, they'll be ready to receive. Now, keep a balance. When the Holy Spirit would override everything, comes in and says, sow some seeds into your children's life, you must sow those seeds. But sometimes you need to step back until they're ready to receive, they will ask you. Until then, be quiet. Because I tell my daughter all the time, this is what you should do. She don't hear me. But when I listen to her and then tell her what she should do, she listens. I'm just telling you all about my relationship with my daughter. I know she wants to leave this church right now. <laughs> so our responsibility as fathers is to acquaint, acquaint our children with the word and the way. And how do we acquaint our children with the word and the way? We live it out by example. So what? Are we in the word? Do our children see us in the word, in the way we act, in the way we behave? How do we handle business and personal matters in life? Are we going to the Lord or are we taking them into our own hands? Do they see us being patient, honoring to one another? We as fathers have to lead the way. Is it difficult? Yes. But you have other fathers that can help hold you accountable to God's way so you can teach them the way. So are we praying with them and praying for their mother? over their mother, over them. You remember, you don't have to pray long. Pray. I pray over my daughter today. I plead the blood of Jesus over her. As she gets in her car, that the blood of Jesus would take her to and from work safely. Amen. I love you, baby. Have a good day. I'm not telling you how to pray. I'm just saying, if you don't know how to pray, you can start there. What our children learn about God from us will put them in good standing throughout their lives, no matter what they do or where they go. Their reverence for God, their respect for parental authority, their knowledge of Christian standards, their habits of self-control, respect for others that they learn from us will help them become productive citizens in the community, the city, and their world. And look, at the end of the day, kids, people are going to do what they want to do. And sometimes it's best to let them do what they want to do because they realize when they're doing what they want to do, it don't always work out, but they learned to not do it that way next time. My mother used to give me a little rope. She says, go on, boy. Go on, do your thing. But I hear, I'll be here when you get back. And when I get off, when I fall off the cliff a little, she jerks it a little back. I'm, I'm oh. Oh, oh. You know, you know that, you know that urging where it's like, dang, I got to go back to my mother. I got to go back to my father. Yeah. That's that little rope we give you guys yeah. as parents. So give them a little rope. I believe it all starts at home. What we do in our children's life at home will determine the way our community turns out. Turn with me to Ephesians 6, 5. And this is where I want you to open your eyes and ears up. It says slaves. Now, I want you to look at slaves as being employees or owner, employers or owners or, or bosses. Employees, wor or employees, workers that were our once children, that grew up to be adults, that taught, were taught by their parents to respect each other, the wiser generation, and their employers, boss and managers. So slaves, workers, employees, obey your earthly employers, boss, or managers. It says here, your masters with fear and trembling, and do it with sincere heart as though you were serving the Lord. So it says here, slaves. We're not slaves, but slaves are employees. Masters are employers. And we're to serve them as if we're serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do what your parents have taught you, and that is to be respectful to all people. Do what you were hired to do with respect to who hired you to do it. Be an example excuse me, be, being anxious and eager to do what the job inquires you to do, and requires you to do, you were hired to do a job, not with a slavish terror, but with fear and displeasing them. So do it in honoring of them. You have a job, you work it to your fullest. Do whatever it is that you do with a sincere heart by pretending, by not pretending, but finding joy in working because God blessed you with the job. Doing it though is if you were serving and working unto the Lord himself, because working unto men, but, uh, but at all times keeping eyes on Jesus Christ. So whatever you do, when you're at work, when you're serving, when you're at home, when you when you're, uh, have a duty or responsibility to an employer, serve them. 
because God expects you to serve them. Not from a slavery or, 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 or superior standpoint or inferior standpoint, but we're supposed to do everything in decent order because we do things for God. Because I love Jesus Christ, I'm going to work because, because, because I love Jesus Christ, I'm going to do this job because I've gotten this job from Jesus Christ and he is blessing me with the job. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 6, verses 6 through 7 says, do not only, do this not only when they are watching you because you want to gain their approval, but with all your heart, do what God wants as slaves of Christ. Do your work as slaves cheerfully as though you serve the Lord and not merely human beings. I'll read this to you. Of course you want your employer, your boss, your manager to notice you for all the hard work and the long hours you're putting in. But with all your heart, do what God wants you to do and what your parents have instilled in you and that, you, and that is to continue to show up on time, be happy, don't gossip, do all your work unto God, not man, and be the example of Christ at work. That's what the scripture is saying. It says you might not like what you do, you might not like what you, you're doing right now at work, but sometimes you got to do what you have to do until you, do until you can do what you want to do. So take a back seat, figure out why God has you where he has you, and keep moving forward. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 6, 8. Remember that the Lord will reward each of us, whether slave or free, for the good work we do. Your employer may not notice or recognize your work or what you do, but God does. He will reward you. He sees and notices you, that you have been doing all things unto him, serving him with distinction and with joy. When God sees those things, he will reward you with that raise. It took me a while to get to that point in my life at work, but I realized when I started serving him, I started to increase, and I've already shared the story with you. I started to increase in my bonus. I saw the started to increase, the, I see an increase in my points. I started to see increase in customers. The, more customers are asking for me, and I don't take this like from a haughty position, but more customers when they come in, oh, who do you want to see, Andre? I know you're here for Andre. Oh, hey, Andre. And I'm like, praise God, because it's not me, it's Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're nearing the end here. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, but without faith, Faith that you trust and believe in God and what he says and what he's doing in your life. Without it, it is impossible to please or be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. Hence, doing all things unto him. So we may have to keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking until we are rewarded. But until then, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking until we are rewarded. We learned a few weeks, a couple weeks ago, last week, that we are to do what we, we are to do all the things we know to do. That is to pray, meditate on his word, stay within the body of believers, fellowship, godly, godly fellowship, godly counsel. Amen. And God will reward us. So last verse, Ephesians 6, verse 9. It says, masters, behave in the same way toward your slaves and stop using threats. Oh, you, you're going to get fired. You know, you're going to get demoted. No. Remember that you and your slaves belong to the same master in heaven who judges everyone by the same standard. God is no respect of persons. He's going to judge me the same way he's going to judge you. So when you have the opportunity to become an employer, a boss or manager, or the one in charge, remember that what you were taught by your parents, and that is to treat everyone with respect and how you want to be treated, regardless if you're a former employer or boss treated you with respect or not. Because the same God that judges them will, God, will judge you. Romans 2.11 says, for God judges everyone by the same standard. So just because you're an executive of a company, just because you are a pastor of a mega church, just because you have more followers than I do, just because you dress better than I do, you're still going to be saying the same judgment placed on you that is, that is placed on me. You know, sometimes I wonder when people say they're blessed, you know, especially with cars like high-end cars, and, you know, and I got a get-out push car, 1972 get-out and push car. Are they more blessed than me? Think about that. I know some of you shake your head, but sometimes you think, you know, people say they're blessed because they have things, but blessing goes beyond just having things. 
Matthew Henry's commentary says, God will call masters and servants to an impartial account for their conduct towards one another and will neither spare the former because they are more advanced nor be severe towards the latter because they are inferior and mean in the world. If both masters and servants will consider their relation and obligation to God and the account they must shortly give to him, they will be more careful of the duty towards each other. So in closing, we as fathers and mothers and parents have a responsibility to teach and train our children in the way that they should go. So when they get older, not only will they be productive citizens, they will be respectful. So when they become an employer, employer, when they hire someone else, they will be respectful and honoring to them. You see the cycle here? Everything starts at home. Teach your kids now so when they leave, they will be able to respect and honor each other, honor the wiser generation. So when you see him on TV talking nonsense, you can say, hey, well, you know, there's no judgment, but hey, you know what? They should operate in a way that is respectful. Because if you operate in a way that's respectful, then you can grab someone's ear. Then they'll listen to you because you're operating from a position of love, which is difficult for a lot of people. But we have an obligation to our children as our children have an obligation to us to teach and train them and instruct them in the way they go. And remember this, fathers. We may not have it all together, but together we have it all. We get this together, together we can get this together. Amen? Let's pray.